Good luck. Thank you. Good, uh, good evening and welcome to today's webinar, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly and I hope you're all safe and well. So today's webinar, I just really want to introduce you to the University of Bath. Uh, we're going to touch upon some of the key aspects of the university, including our culture as an institution, about where we're located. Um, but we're also going to go into a bit of detail about other aspects like student life and also the city itself. Um, if you do have any questions at all, do keep sending those questions in during the webinar and I will try to answer as many as I can at the end. There, are, there is also a poll being made today. So there's a poll running. There's two questions, just the two. If you have time, I would please encourage you to just answer those two questions so I can find out a bit more about yourself and what you want to do um, in the UK. OK, without further ado, we're going to move on um, to the first part. And that's looking a bit about Bath. So to start with, a bit about where we are. Um, I'm sure some of, you, some of you have been to the UK before, but perhaps you haven't been to Bath before. So just to let you know where we are, we are in the southwest of the UK. It's a really good place to live, to explore some of the best parts of the UK, in my opinion. Um, but you're also very close to big cities. So from Bath, you can get to London, the capital of the UK, obviously, in one hour, 30 minutes. You can also reach Cardiff, the capital of Wales, in less than an hour. But on our doorstep too, we have a big city called Bristol, and that's within 15 minutes reach of the city of Bath. So there's lots of big cities within easy access, but we also have lots of other places of natural beauty or really wonderful spots to visit if you do live in Bath. So we have, for example, the West Coast. So the Southwest coastline is really beautiful. I'm sure you've probably never really considered the UK as a, a destination for beaches and beach resorts. So you might be pleasantly surprised by some of the really nice um, seaside resort towns we have along the west southwest coast. We also have um, the Cotswolds, which is an area of natural beauty, and Stonehenge, which is a really famous British landmark, both again within easy reach, so within an hour's drive of Bath. If you're not sure what they are, um, just Google them and I'm sure you'll be really excited to see them with your own eyes once you arrive in the UK. With all that in mind, um, Bath itself has lots to offer. So Bath is a UNESCO World Heritage City. It's one of only two UNESCO cities in the entire United Kingdom. Now, in the entire Europe, sorry, not just United Kingdom. So in Europe, there are only two UNESCO cities, Bath and Venice. So that just gives you an idea about the uniqueness of the city. Um, but later on, I'm going to give you a bit more in-depth um, information about the city itself. But first of all, let's have a look at the university as well. So the University of Bath um, and just kind of some of our strong points and kind of our culture as well, as I mentioned. So when you're making your decision, it depends where you are in the process. But one way to kind of nicely judge a university's teaching quality is called the TEF, T-E-F. This is the Teaching Excellence Framework, and it's a government independently assessed um, a uh, group that look at different universities, almost every university in the UK is assessed and they judge the overall teaching quality. And I'm delighted to say that Bath's been uh, um, given the gold award, the highest accolade in terms of our teaching. So that's something we're really proud of. Teach, um, student experience is really important for the university too. So we're fourth for um, student experience, meaning that students who come to Bath enjoy their time studying at the university and living in the city as well. Um, of course, we're also a top 10 university. So within the UK and internationally, we're regarded as one of the best universities in the UK. Uh, for example, in this year's Guardian ranking, we're sixth. Um, and again, you'll find that we're very well known and prestigious with employers and so on within the UK and beyond. And finally, graduate prospects. So the University of Bath is ranked fifth for graduate prospects. Um, so this just means that once students finish their studies, they can secure work um, full-time work within six months of graduating. And we always fare very well for this, um, for reasons that I will go into in a bit more detail in a moment. That's just kind of some of our, kind of a taste of what the university's like. Let's also look at what kind of courses we, we offer as well. So before I go into any more depth about this slide, uh, I would just like to highlight two things. Um, first of all, if your course isn't there, 
don't be alert, uh, alarmed. It's it's we've I've only selected a few courses today because obviously of time constraints. And also, if your course isn't ranked, that is also something not necessarily to be alarmed about. There are a large number of programs in the UK which just are not currently assessed. And that's probably the reason you can't find the course you're interested in in any of the rankings, subject rankings. But I just wanted to show you really the types of courses we offer and the fact that we offer a range of courses and we excel in those courses we offer. So, for example, first in architecture, marketing, sports, science. And we're second for psychology, sociology, business management, social policy. And I hope you're noticing there that the, the broad range, the broad scope of different types of subject areas as well. It's not all in one. Um, also, of course, engineering. So we're a STEM university. So we, we do very well in the UK um, for our engineering courses and departments, accounting and finance, but also courses like economics, um, Italian, ele electrical, electronic engineering, social work, and so on. So as I like just to highlight, we don't do law. We don't do medicine. But the courses that we do do, we do very well. And if you have a course that's not here, just send me an email or check on our website and hopefully we'll have that course that you're looking for. We do offer it, I'm sure. And a bit more about the university more generally now. So the university's population is 18,000. So it's not a massive university, but it's not small either. In the UK, it's probably just above average in terms of its population size. And the population is continuing to grow as the university is expanding. Um, and as you can see here, this is a breakdown of the cohort. So 75% of our students are undergraduate students. Um, then 15% are postgraduate taught, that being uh, um, master's students. And then the, the remainder are made up of PhD students. Um, and if you're wondering why is the proportion so large for the undergraduates, it's obviously just for the reason that the courses can last between three all the way up to six years for undergraduate level. Whereas obviously for um, master's level, it's a bit smaller. I mean, you're looking for one or two year programmes only. And in terms of demographic, where do our students come from? Well, we're an international community at the University of Bath. So we'll find that over 30 percent of our students are from outside of the UK. And if you're looking at postgraduate level, postgraduate level, then you're looking more closely at 50 to 60 percent international. So we really welcome students from around the world. That's why we often go to Turkey, because we want to encourage students, with different mindsets, different perspectives to join our international community and share your own outlook and your own way of thinking with your classmates, with the institution as a whole. So 130 different nationalities on campus including a very um, vibrant mix of different nationalities in our academic team too. And so now I want to kind of bring all that together and give you a, a history lesson about Bath. Um, and don't worry, it's a very brief history lesson. It's just looking at our foundation, our roots as a university. So this is the first photo taken of the campus. Um, and again, don't worry, the campus has been developed significantly since this was taken. This is just to highlight really our DNA. So when we were given our university status in 1966, so we were a relatively new university, within our chartership, so that's kind of our contract with the government to allow us to become a university, it states this. The object of the university shall be to advance learning and knowledge by teaching and research in close association with industry and commerce. So that that focus on shrinking the gap between academia and the world of work is embedded in our very DNA, in our, very much embodied by the university spirit. And that's something that we continue to this day. So we've got connections to industry and a focus on ensuring that students are work ready. And that's something we really pride ourselves on. Which brings me very nicely on to kind of our core themes, which kind of tie in with this, obviously, because that's our DNA. So to start with, these are the six themes that we really, uh, really focus on at the university. We've got a lot of emphasis on. I hope that they're um, themes that you perhaps can see yourselves uh, being drawn to as well. So first of all, we're research led. So the University of Bath is quite unique in the fact that its teaching quality is of the highest standard. So the TEF, which I mentioned earlier, but also the REF. So the U UK government also has a research assessment called the REF, Research Excellence Framework which assesses research output for each institution. And the U uh, University of Bath's research was ranked, or 87% of our research output was ranked as world-leading or world-class. So again, that highest 
um, the highest ranked you know, research out output. And that's really important for all students, of course, for PhD students, but also for undergraduate students, master's students too. Why? Because it means that the academics are bringing the latest research into the classroom. So you as a student, you're learning from those at the cutting edge, at the front, the forefront of their field or your field, your expertise. And that's really important because you can bring that obviously to your studies, but also once you graduate, you have the freshest knowledge about your field, your industry, that you can then bring to the world of work. Practical business experience, again, is really important for university. So we offer a large number of placement opportunities. All, all, almost all of our undergraduate degrees offer a one year paid placement chance, if that suits you. Some of them, you have to do the paid placement, for the majority you can decide if you want to do that one year uh, work paid, paid placement. But we have one of the highest number of undergraduate students doing work placements in the whole of the UK. In fact, we're number two, we're the second highest number of students doing placements. Also, we for our postgraduate level, we offer um, placement opportunities on a number of our courses. We offer consultancy projects, working with businesses on a number of our courses instead of a dissertation as well as shorter placements, three months or six month placements, depending on the programme. So we do have that. Again, our DNA is, is clear and it's imprinted in many of our programmes. We, of course, have the global focus, which I, I focused on earlier, um, and professional development. So many of our courses, again, have that professional development um, element, component embedded in the course. So there'll be opportunities for you to think about what you want to do after, whether that's going into research, perhaps going into industry, whatever it might be. We, we want to look at your own personal um, uh, ambitions and try to tailor and, and support you in, in, in achieving what you want. The careers to support, again, I'm going to go into more detail in a moment. There's loads of really good career support, as you can imagine, at a university like Bath. That's available for all of our students. Um, but as I said, I'm going to go in a bit more detail about that in a moment. And finally, alumni engagement. So the last core theme I'm just going to highlight now is the fact that we really encourage and cultivate a spirit of engagement with our alumni. So once you've graduated from the university, we don't just want to cut ties, but we want to continue that relationship. So we have um, 120,000 alumni. We run events in 40 different countries around the world, and we will keep inviting you to join us if you wish to network with other um, graduates from Bath, we've got that Bath spirit embedded in them, but also to continue to engage with the university. It's a great opportunity for you to find work opportunities or just to develop your own social opportunities too. So they're just some of the core themes to give you kind of a, a taste of what it's like at Bath and, as I said, our culture. Um, and it's good to just finish on a, a quote here, actually. So on the left-hand side, is just a kind of a selection of some of the companies we work with. So Bath has um, over 3,000 um, employers that we work closely with, whether that's corporate partners or placement partners, et cetera. Um, and these are just a select few. So for example, consultants and banking firms like Zurich and PwC, automotive, automotive industry firms like BMW, Rolls-Royce, Land Rover, NGOs like United Nations, and also of course, IBM, Microsoft, IT companies. But what I really wanted to highlight here was this quote, and this is from the head of CRM and Insight at the biggest drug retailer in the UK, or one of the biggest drug retailers in the UK. And this quote sums everything up nicely. One of the key strengths I found for Bath students is that they're well-rounded, they're not just academic, they know the real world, which is really important. And again, that just goes back to the, the very brief history lesson a few slides ago about that connection to academia and the world of work whether that's doing PhD study, doing further research at university or entering industry. Either way, Bath has that focus we hope that you can buy into and join us with your own work ethic ethos. So that's just an overview of the university so far. Um, but now let's go into a bit more detail as well about scholarships and also for those wanting to start this year, a little bit about COVID-19 too. So to start with, just very briefly, I'm just going to kind of highlight the scholarships we do have available at Bath. So we have undergraduate scholarships. So if you want to do a bachelor's degree at the university, we accept A star, A star, A star, or the equivalent, um, and that's up to £2,000 tuition fee waiver. Um, so that would be, depend on which, which qualification you're studying at high school. There's also the IB scholarship, 
and that's between 42 up to 44 points. Um, and then it's up to £8,000 discount on your first year's tuition fees. We also offer the International Foundation Year um, Progressing Student Scholarship, and that is for students who join us via the foundation year. So if you're if you can't quite um, reach the university directly, you can join the foundation year. And if you score in the top 15 in your cohort, you'll get that £2,000 automatic tuition fee waiver on your first year of tuition. We also offer postgraduate scholarships as well. So master's scholarships, for example. And we have a total of nearly £105,000 scholarships. And depending on which course you apply for, you can potentially earn up to £10,000 discount on tuition fees. Um, and again, it depends which program. So for the School of Management, up to, up to £5,000. Um, but for all other courses and all other faculties, you can win one or two awards. And obviously, if you win both, you'll get that joint £10,000 discount on tuition fees. Um, MBA students, if there's any listening today or anyone who's joined me today, hello. Um, we also offer you scholarships as well, between £3,000 all the way up to 30% discount on tuition fees. So there are plenty of different scholarships there available. Um, I would um, ask you to look on the website for them it's up to date, for example, application deadlines and things like that. Uh, but just to give you a taste of the kind of financial support we can give at Bath. And entry requirements too. Of course, this is a very important um, point to bring up today as well. So um, first of all, for those wanting to do a bachelor's degree at Bath, um, for example, we're looking between 75 to 85% CGPA, and that includes 75 to 85% in key subjects from the final year. So that's for those doing the Turkish diplomacy. Um, that's just something to bear in mind. But you can look on the individual course pages, which will give you the exact um, uh, entry requirement for that program. For those um, wanting to do a master's degree or beyond, we're normally looking for a GPA of between 2.8 to 3.0, depending on the institution and the course. It's important to highlight that if you can't quite meet this, don't worry, we do take a holistic approach. So perhaps you can't quite meet the GPA requirement. It doesn't mean that we're just going to um, reject you. It means that we're going to look at everything and make a kind of a, a joint up decision before we, we, we give you a result. So don't be put off if you're not quite meeting the requirement on the screen. Either email me or, as I said, um, do apply because the uh, uh, admissions team, sorry, do take everything into account. And also the University of Bath uh, International Foundation here. Yeah. So again, there's a requirements there. So we're looking for an average of 75% with at least 75% in the relevant subjects, um, depending on which qualification you have. Um, but for those with the Lisa Bitrima uh, diplomacy, apologies if my Turkish is not great, um, we're looking for an average of 60% with 60% in relevant subjects. And again, look on the individual course pages for the exact requirements we're after. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind for bachelor's level that we do accept IB or the Turkish uh, diplomacy. And we can also make a joint offer if, if you need, need that. If you're doing both qualifications, we can actually make your joint offer based on you achieving the required results in your IB or your diplomacy. I hope that's clear. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask them and I'll try to address them at the end. OK, um, we're not going to spend too long on the, the COVID-19 topic. Um, I'm not sure. I think there'll be a mix of students here today. Um, so there'll be some students perhaps who are coming this year, but perhaps the majority of you are not. So that's why we'll just touch upon it briefly. But just to let you know what we've been doing. So all of our classes, classes went online in March to um, ensure the well-being of our student community. And all lectures, face-to-face -face time is, is being conducted online. Uh, and the infrastructure is there to support students to make sure that they can continue their studies um, as best as we can. We're also offering online uh, meditation classes, well-being classes, student support to ensure the well-being of our student community as well. Any students who remained in Bath, um, so who couldn't return home or didn't want to return home, we have continued to support them. Campus is still open. We have security on campus. The shop's still open. The restaurant's still open. And we are giving free breakfast, lunch, dinner to all students on campus. So that's absolutely free just to support our students who are still in, in Bath. Um, but also as a university, we've been supporting our local community and the country as well. So we've been supplying PPE for our local pharmacies, hospitals and so on. 
And we've also been helping with the research, so helping the government. Our science labs have been really working hard on the research element of um, trying to find a vaccine, for example, for COVID-19. Also, for those looking to enter this year for 2020, um, just some points to think about and just things to be aware of. First of all, processional courses. So all processional programmes are now running online. If you do complete your processional course this year, you can just also bear in mind that for this year, you can actually use that exit certificate from your precessional for 2020 entry or 2021 entry. So you can actually use it for either this year or next year if you change your mind and want to defer. Um, also, if, you want to, if, if you're having any difficulties meeting your conditions um, for anything related to COVID-19, please just let the admissions teams know ASAP because we are being as sympathetic as possible. So if you can't quite um, get certificates, for example, there's mitigating circumstances, just keep your admissions team that you're, you're in contact with up to date and they will be as sympathetic and um, help you as much as possible. Um, but also we are now offering more English exams. So as well as the IELTS test, we're now offering online alternatives. You can find all of them on our website, but that includes the IELTS indicator, password and Duolingo. So if you can't get to an IELTS center, we, we're trying to be flexible in that regard too. Again, deposits as well. If you have got an offer and you need a deposit extension, just contact your admissions team and they will try their best to be as flexible as possible. It's not guaranteed, but we, again, we, we are very sympathetic to the case by case basis. And then starting your studies. So our plan is to start courses this year as scheduled. So we're still going ahead with plan A, which is to run the course from October as we'd originally planned. And it's still four months till the start of the course. So we're, we're confident that this can still go ahead, um, depending on how things evolve. If it's deemed it's just not OK, it's not possible to do so at the very beginning of the course, we'll just switch. We have a contingency plan in place to switch online um, to run the course blended learning or online learning until it's deemed OK to then switch back to campus learning. And then the course will run, the remainder of the course will just run um, back on campus as it normally would. So you'll find that our plan A is to run on campus. Plan B is just to do blended learning, online learning until it's then deemed possible to switch back to offline learning again. I hope that's clear. Um, but yeah, so that's important. But the, the key really is that safety is paramount. So the first thing we're going to be considering is the safety of our student community and if it's safe to run the courses and all the decisions will be made around that focus and around that. Um, uh, yeah, that kind of focus on the safety of our students, and our student community. We do have a landing page that's uh, detailed there. So do look at our COVID-19 landing page if you want more up to date information about all of this. OK, that's enough about COVID-19. I hope that answered questions that you, some of you may have had um, as, as well, of course, answer the ask the questions, sorry, in the Q&A if you have them. We're now going to turn to student life as well. So what is it like to be a student uh, in Bath? And to start with, just an introduction to our campus. So quite clearly, we're a campus university a green campus. Um, we're fairly compact. Um, you can see everyone studies together. There's a sports training village on the bottom left hand corner down here. Um, we also have undergraduate accommodation too on the right side down here as well. The great thing about the sports training village um, that I didn't mention just then was that there's running track, there's a swimming pool, there's tennis courts, rugby pitches, football pitches, and students can use all of these facilities for no charge. So you'll get a free sports pass as one of our students, giving you free access to all our world, world class facilities, except for the gym, which you will have to pay more for. Um, but just bear that in mind, if you're a sporty person or you want to pick up a sport, Bath's a great, great place to do that, actually. And then a little bit further up, this is the, the kind of the, the, the heart of the operations. This is called the parade. And in the parade, we have the students union. There's lots of clubs, societies. There you can buy your um, five pound coach ticket to London if you want with your student discount. And there's also a convenience store there, too. If you go slightly further up, we have a library. On the right hand side and opposite the library we have a lake as well and around this lake you might see students in the spring and summer speaking having barbecues some downtime after exams or some revision before exams as well um, and also on campus we have uh, two banks we have a supermarket with an import section so you can get some home comforts if you wish we also have a doctor's a dentist 
and we have postgraduate study space and we also have postgraduate campus accommodation. So there's lots to do on campus. And if you look at the far right hand corner, you might be thinking, where's the city? Well, it's just there. So the, the city of Bath is within, within easy reach on the right hand corner of that photo. Um, and that's within 10 to 15 minutes by bus you can get from campus to city. And the buses are very regular. So if you're living in the campus, don't be uh, too, too worried. You can easily get to the city and vice versa too. It's really quite accessible and the buses run 24 hours a day. So that's just an introduction really to the, the university. Again, any questions, keep firing them in. Uh, I look forward to trying to answer some at the end. Do fire some challenging ones in if you wish. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of a nice uh, overview really of the facilities I just mentioned. So the sports facilities, um, that are absolutely free for our students. And as you can see there, they're pretty big and pretty impressive. You've got the swimming pool, the rugby pitches, the, the running tracks and all sorts. There's, there's kind of facilities for all kinds of interest in sport there here at Bath. And turning now from our facilities to our support. So at Bath, you'll find there's academic support. So we're there to support you during your studies helping you write here academic English, pre present in English, because we know students from around the world have learned in different education systems. So being from Turkey, your way of learning, your way of writing is obviously going to be different. So we're there to support you. But apart from that and the money advice team, the, the student services, the immigration team, I just want to focus on one team today, and that's the career support service. Just again, to give you that taste of what we can offer. So we offer workshops for international students and for all of our students looking at how you can secure employment in the UK or internationally. So if you're interested in studying and working in the UK, we can help you to adjust to the different system of uh, recruit, recruit, recruitment for work within the UK. The career service are there to give you one to one advice, uh, as I said, workshops, um, email advice, phone, phone advice, online appointments, too. So there's lots of advice and support there for you regardless of which course you come to do. There are also loads of events we run on campus too. So every year we will run the careers fair twice a year, October and March. And that will give you the chance to speak with employers, international and local. And we, we welcome hundreds of employers every year to, to Bath, to the campus, to allow students like you the chance to speak with the companies and find out a bit more about what kind of employee they're looking for. And also you can start thinking about networking and thinking about job opportunities for yourself. We also welcome companies and, and visiting uh, researchers to come and give talks and meet with students. So there's lots for you to do there. Obviously, there's practice interviews, assessment centres, online resources, and there's also a lifetime of support. And this is something we're really proud of. So I mentioned earlier about our alumni network. Well, actually, our career service is there for you as an alumni. So once you finish your studies at Bath, all the way until retirement, you can actually use the university's fantastic um, resources and career service. So they can give you face-to-face uh, -face advice if you're in Bath still, it's a lovely city, it wouldn't surprise me, or if you're in London or elsewhere, they can book online appointments. And that service and that infrastructure is there to support you from graduate, from student, all the way to graduate and all the way to retirement. So that's something we're really proud of and I'd encourage you to make the most of. Okay, so obviously the support's there, uh, but also just about your social life as well. Because it's important, like I mentioned at the beginning, that our students have a great experience in Bath. So you'll find the Students Union is there to support you. We have a postgraduate officer, if you're a postgraduate student, and a large number of student union officers too. They can help you with part-time work, so if you want to work in the UK during your studies, that is completely possible. Um, and you can do that via the student union. They're there to support you with that as well. You can also use, obviously, the career service to help you secure that part time work. But the student union also offers um, loads of different societies and clubs you can join. And for example, you've got sports clubs, you've got um, societies. So, for example, coffee society, basketball society all the way to Harry Potter Society, for those who are interested in England because of the wizard. There'll be like-minded people in Bath for you. But also if you want to go to Turkish Society, for example, you can meet people from Turkey and also those who are really uh, engaged with Turkey and want to learn and learn more about the exciting and fantastic culture um, from Turkey as well. 
we have loads of different um, countries that have societies. So I would encourage you as well to join different societies, meet people from different ways of life, from, with different perspectives. And again, bring your own perspective and your own outlook to that society too. So that's just to show you really, there's lots to do um, as a student. Um, but of course, not everyone's sporty and maybe you don't want to join a society. We also have an art center at Bath. So this is quite unique for a STEM university like ourselves. We have the Edge, which was built five years ago. And this is the creative hub, creative heart at the university. This is where you can go to go to an art exhibition, go to a theater performance, or even join in, join a dance class, join an art class and volunteer. You can do all of that at the Edge on campus at Bath as well. So for those not sporty or also artistic, we, have, we can cater for you as well. Three dance studios, we have seven practice rooms and so on. So there's lots for you to do regardless of your interests. Okay, so that's kind of a, a real brief overview of student life, some of the opportunities that exist, as well as the support that's there for you as a student. And we're just gonna finish before we then take your questions, um, looking at our city as well. So like I mentioned at the beginning, we're in a really quite, quite a wonderful spot in the UK for exploring some of the best countryside, some of the best beaches and so on. But the city of Bath itself is also quite special, quite unique. Like I said, it's one of only two UNESCO cities in Europe, fun fact of the day, uh, Bath and Venice. Um, but also, why, do we, why are we called Bath? It's because quite unoriginally, um, we have a bath. That is a hot spring. So we are a hot spring city, which is actually really unusual in the UK because we don't have any mountains and so on. Um, but we are a hot spring city. That's where we got our name. And, behind, and in this photo behind the, the, the um, words, you can see the, the, the Roman baths. And this is um, for visitors to visit, but also you as a student living in the city. So as a student, you can actually visit this museum and other museums in the area for free as well, just showing your student card. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice. And again, very unique. We also have the UK's favorite Christmas market. So November to December every year. So over about four to five weeks, we have a huge Christmas market that spreads out across the whole of the city. And with Bath being such a traditional um, city with some real character, the Christmas market really adds extra sparkle to the city at this time. And it's a great time to go shopping for presents for your friends and family at home or your new friends and family you've met in Bath. And it's just a lovely time of the year to really experience that British culture. Apart from that, of course, as I mentioned, Bath's a really popular city. So it's very bustling, lots of cafes, bars, restaurants, lots of visitors every year. We also quite uniquely have wonderful countryside within very easy reach. So maybe you want a bit of downtime after an exam uh, or, yeah, you just want to go and have a relaxing walk. You can easily do that in Bath, um, visiting the beautiful countryside. So, yeah, you can take a walk from the city centre and within 20 minutes you're by a canal next to a lovely British pub or next to some cafes. And you can really enjoy that as well, that experience. And finally, it's one of the safest cities in the UK too. So the, the Bath is actually the second safest city in, in the UK. So you won't have any sort of worries about uh, danger or crime taking place. It's a real tranquil, quite peaceful city to live into. And just to finish with, that's just to give you kind of an overall of some of the nice spots in the UK. So the top left bath, you cannot swim in anymore, the traditional Roman bath. But we also now have a rooftop hot spring on the bottom right hand corner, which students and, and locals and tourists alike can enjoy with a view looking over the city of Bath. And again, pretty unique. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely city. Um, I hope if you haven't been, you do get to visit before you make your choice. Um, and also Google Bath if you have a chance, just to look at the city too and find out what it offers. Okay, so we can now take any questions. I hope you do have some questions coming in. Um, I'd be happy to ask, answer any you do have. Sending them over. Thanks a lot, James. It was a really fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, so let's wait for a few minutes to see if there is going to be any questions. At the moment, there is none, but uh, uh, they can probably get a uh, little inspiration with your presentation. Whatever yeah, they're curious about, they'll ask. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if there's no more questions, we can. I just finished there by just letting students know about an upcoming event. Sure. Uh, Talk about that. So we have a, yeah, sure. We have a virtual open day. So this is a really good opportunity to find out more. So you might not have questions now. Um, if you do, do just type them in. Uh, looking, looking forward to answering some. But we have an online open day coming up uh, 10th of June. So that's pretty soon. Um, and that's a great chance to talk to current postgraduate students. So that's PhD master's students. You can also speak to departments, talking to professors, the admissions teams, immigration teams, uh, and uh, admissions teams for the gen university generally as well. So it's a really good time to engage with the university, ask any questions you might have there. So even if you can't think of any now, maybe you'll have some tonight, a eureka moment, you can ask them at a virtual open day. Just make sure you register beforehand to avoid disappointment. I'll just check one more time. Is there anything coming through? Uh, does the course is accredited, accredited all over the world? Uh, it depends what you mean by accreditation. Uh, many of our courses are accredited. Um, so, for example, a number of our engineering courses have accreditation, a number of our psychology courses. So it does depend on the programme. Obviously, some programmes just don't have accreditation um, because of the nature of the programme as well. Um, it's a good question. It's probably the best thing to do is to check on the the course page. So it will it will say if it's accredited. So a large number of our accounting and finance courses are, for example. Um, you just have to look on the individual course page to see whether it is. Um, but University of Bath masters and bachelor's degrees are well recognised, and employers do regard them um, uh, students from from Bath highly because they do know about the work ethos and the connection to industry, which can really help students. Um, she says she's asking for a psychology department. Okay, and again, then you need to look at, so I'll back, for example, if it's a bachelor's degree in psychology, then the, the it is accredited. Um, if it's a master's degree, two of them are accredited, two of them are not. So it depends on which one you're actually, the student's actually interested in. Um, I'd say the best thing to do if she really wants to know specifics would be to email me and I can give an exact courses that we offer that are accredited within the department and those that are not. Um, but even those that are not, doesn't necessarily, it depends what she wants from the degree. So it depends if she wants to become a psychologist or going to becoming a researcher or practitioner. It really does depend if it, if it matters. Oh, is that a response? No, it's another question. <laughs> okay, so for that student, I'd really encourage her to email me and I'll let her know exactly which courses are accredited. Okay, and the question is, could you please tell about the online programs if you are providing uh, in this process? Online courses that we, we, we offer? Yeah, probably like online degrees or any yeah. kind of online courses you have. Yeah, absolutely. So we do offer online courses if that's your interest. Um, we offer a number. So we offer MA Education, which is a very flexible online course. It's a part time two to five year course and you can kind of shape it um, to suit your, your interests. We also offer computer science completely online. We offer uh, management entrepreneurship online um, and an increasing number of other programs, too. Um, but yeah, at the moment we offer those three online, um, but yeah, so it depends what their interests are. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, mm -hmm. Do you offer any PhD degrees in archaeology or, uh, you know, art degrees? Because you think that it's a UNESCO city, right? So it should mm -hmm. be uh, maybe professionalized in the heritage department or cultural uh, arts, yeah. you know? It's a, it's a very good point. Uh, we don't actually have an arts uh, department uh, in terms of fine arts and things like that. We do offer a master's in um, conservation of historic buildings. So that's a really, really popular course, actually. And actually, we get quite a few Turkish students joining as well um, for that program. And that is looking at preserving um, the historic buildings, obviously, and that's why I think it's quite well suited to the city of Bath. And also the, re the academics from that program do um, supervise students for PhD level as well. Sounds like a program I would love to go. <laughs> yeah, you should come join. Yeah, well, you'll be welcome. Um, at the moment, there are no other questions. Uh, anything else that you want to add while we wait for more questions? Anything else to add? Uh, well, I guess I could show just show my um, email address as well again for those who are who do have further questions and for the student who's interested in psychology um, and just some other key links. But particularly the first one's my email. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully students have found 
the information to say useful. Um, depends where they are in the decision making process. Um, but yeah, if they do have any extra questions in the next months, uh, either this year or next, whenever it is, I I really do um, try my best to support Turkish students. So any questions they have, don't feel feel shy to uh, email. There is one more question: requirements to get scholarships. That's a good question. So let's say, for example, um, it's a postgraduate scholarship. What we would look for is a number of factors. So there's two scholarships for the majority of the postgraduate courses. Um, for one of them, it's called the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence, and that's looking at academic credentials. So for all of them, really, you want to have strong academic credentials, but particularly for the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence. We also look for your leadership potential. So any experiences you can show um, that make you stand out, that perhaps show you're, you're a leader of your group. It might be at university, it might be in the world of work, it can really make you stand out. Also, any experiences generally that you can, you can name can really strengthen your application. So we're looking at kind of your soft skills, your experiences, your networking potential, um, and also just yeah, generally your, your kind of leadership potential, what you can bring to the institution. So always think about selling yourself. What, why would the university want to fund my studies? Um, is a great way of thinking about it and a great perspective to have. Perfect. And one more question. I think this is our mm -hmm. last question. Uh, for like MBA it. programs, is it possible to start online and then continue on campus on the next semester? Yeah, absolutely. So at the moment, the plan, as I said, was because MBA, the MBA cohort is actually always restricted anyway. So it's usually only around 40, 45 students in the cohort. Um, generally. So it, we're, we're hoping that that'll be uh, an easier um, course to bring back to campus earlier just because it's smaller. Um, but we do have that plan in place for the MBA course too. So we're still planning the courses, including the MBA course, to start online or offline in October as planned. So yes, it could it could happen that it starts blended. It might start blended with some some classes on campus, some online, etc. But yes, absolutely. The MBA car, um, course will start online or offline in October. Great. Um, I think we have come to the end of our presentation. Uh, anything else that you want to add before we close? Uh, no, that's, it's been great to um, speak to everybody today. Thanks for the opportunity, Ayeti. Um, uh, yeah, no, no more questions for me or no points for me to say. Um, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> great. Thank you so much to uh, join us for this uh, webinar, uh, for spending time with us. I hope to see you in Turkey very, very soon. Yeah, I hope so too. I can't wait for my next time to come over for a kebab. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.